I want to spend some time here talking about column convergence within Promax. Occasionally these columns can be pretty tricky. We might come up with some error messages along the way and so I want to, to illustrate some tips, some tricks that we can do in order to get these columns to converge. So I've put together a few different examples that we'll go over. We're starting here with an acid gas enrichment unit. I have this absorber that failed when I tried to converge. You'll see that here in my message block. It says that my absorber has failed. And so the very first thing I'll point out is anytime you have a column that fails or won't converge, the very first thing that you want to do is check your inlet streams and make sure that the inlet streams going into your column look correct, look like you expect or what you would expect to have going into that column. Okay, so in an instance like this, I would want to make sure that my flow rate of my gas coming in is correct, check my temperatures and pressures everywhere, check my compositions. You know, this is an amine stream, stream 21 here going into my absorber, and so I'd want to make sure that its composition was a mixture of water and amine, you know, and so that it wasn't just like a pure water stream or a water H2S mixture, or anything like that. And so I can't encourage you enough to first just make sure that the streams going into your column look correct, okay? Now as far as if we assume that's correct and we move on from there, I'm going to open up my absorber. I'll see that my error message here says that the numerical method has failed. Okay, and so this, this can be a common error, something you might see. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this convergence tab inside of my column. And we'll see some convergence options that we have here. And these are all some different options that you have that you can play with in order to kind of help your column converge. Okay, so there's default modeling methods here for our enthalpy model, our inner loop model, and our mesh method. And the defaults that are chosen are chosen because they are the quickest methods for convergence. And so they're kind of simplified models that will run the fastest and 99% of the time they'll converge just fine. But you do have the ability to come in here and to, to tweak these models to see if that helps your column converge. These models are just simply the model or the method Promax uses to, to get to convergence. And so it's not going to change the final result. It's only changing the method used to get to that result. And so the very first th thing that I would change is my enthalpy model. If I come in and change that to composition dependent, I would change that. And then I would try to execute my block. And in this particular case, we'll actually see that that was all that was required. Okay, so it runs through for a second. If I look back at my project now, that column is converged just fine. Okay, and so that was the fir first thing I would try here on this convergence tab was changing my enthalpy model. If that doesn't work, then you might also change your inner loop model. And then also try changing your mesh method as well. The K damping and this Boston Sullivan KB value are also uh, useful, have to do with when oscillation is the issue. And so after playing with these different models, if there's still issues, you may consider changing the K damping and, this K and checking this KB value as well. One other thing I'd mention, you'll see a maximum initial iterations. This has to do with just the initial startup of the model, and 50 for that is almost always sufficient. If I come over here to the solver grouping, you'll see a maximum iterations here, and so this is the overall iterations that the column will do. And occasionally it might just be that you need uh, more time, more iterations for the column to converge. So you could increase this number. But usually if we begin and, and play with these models, that's going to be what gets us to convergence. And so that's the first example that I'd show you here. Let me jump over here to a second page now. I have a turbo expander. What I want to illustrate here is occasionally you might have a column that's running, it's converging just fine, and when you make small changes everything continues to converge. Uh, but then we make a really big change, and when we make that big change the column struggles to converge. So in this example, everything was running fine at first when I was running this tower in ethane recovery mode. But now I've switched into ethane rejection mode. And so my temperatures around my column are vastly different. 
and these large changes can cause some issues. If I try to execute this flow sheet, we'll see that the iterations of my tower giving me these approximate solutions, they're running very slowly. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and just abort that. Okay, stop my column there. And I'm going to go back into this column, once again on this convergence tab, and I'm going to highlight this delete last solution button that we have. And so Promax will always use, use the last solution. So if the column is converged before, it's going to start from that converged point and try to find the new solution for your new conditions. But if conditions have changed drastically, that, that last place may not be a good starting point. Okay, so if it's only small changes, the last place usually is a good starting point to get us to convergence very quickly. But in this case, since we've changed from recovery to rejection mode, very different cases, I'm going to choose this delete last solution button. And that's just going to tell my column to start from scratch. If I click execute now, and we see down here, we might get a couple approximate solution cases, but overall that ran through very quickly, and my column has now converged. Okay, so that's another tool that you can use to help with convergence. The third example I have here is a sour water stripper. And an issue that can be common with, with things like this is when you have a pump around loop, you'll see I have stream four as a draw off of tray two, coming through being cooled, some of it's being purged, and then most of it is returning in stream 8 back to the column. If I open up the column in this case, the error message that I see is that a duty estimate is required for this pump around loop. And so when you have a pump around loop, there's going to be a little bit of energy put in in the pump, and then a lot of energy taken out in our air cooler. And so to get Promax started, sometimes it will ask for an estimate of how much duty is being either put into or removed from that particular loop. Okay, so in this case, it's a cooling loop. We're going to be removing energy. And Promax just wants us to estimate that energy. If I come over to the Specifications tab, I'm going to choose to add a new specification. And one of the options I have here is a pump around estimate. Okay, so I'll just click OK, and it's going to ask me what my exiting stream is, so where my pump around begins. Well, that's stream 4 that's coming out of my column. Promax recognized streams, that stream 8 is what returns to my column. And then the type in this case is a pump around duty, and this is the most common estimate required. So with that selected, I need to estimate what my duty is going to be. You don't really need to be super accurate on this estimate. The most important part is that we get the sign correct. So since this loop is cooling, it's going to be negative energy, meaning we're removing energy. So I'm going to want to put a negative number in here. And in general, these are usually on the million BTUs per hour type scale. And so I'm going to switch to those units and just type in negative 1 here for my, my target estimate. I'm going to count, uh, put that down as an estimate, and so it knows to start with that value, and then it will determine the actual amount of duty. But we're just giving it an estimate to start with. So if I click OK, we'll see that's selected as an estimate. And if I click Execute, my column, we'll see at the very bottom, begins to run through. Promax calculates what the actual duty is there. Again, my estimate wasn't that precise but it was good enough to get things started and now if I look back my column has converged and so that's what's meant when it asks for a pump around estimate the last example I'll show you here I have a fractionation train and I have a deethanizer that won't converge if I go ahead and try to run that we'll see once again that it's coming up with these approximate solutions and if I let it run long enough, it won't come to a solution. Let's look at what the column's trying to do. If I look at the specifications here, I have a bottoms ethane spec as well as my top product ethane spec. And you can see that right now it's just not getting close to those values. Okay, so I'm going to stop the column. It's obviously not getting to the solution. 
So another thing that can be important to keep in mind when you're running a column, you might have some particular specifications you're trying to hit. But in general, it can be easier if we start with more simplistic specifications in our column and then work our way up to the, to the actual specifications that we want to hit. Okay, the most simple way to run our column is by using the boil up ratio and reflux ratio uh, that it generates by default. And so to get this to converge, I'm going to change these back to just calculations. And for my boil up and reflux, I'll make those specifications. And so it's just going to start by solving to a boil up ratio of 1 and a reflux ratio of 1 as well. If I go ahead and execute, we'll see that that executes very quickly. I'll see here that I have way too much C2 going to the bottom and that my overhead product isn't pure enough. And so to get less C2 in the bottom, I'm going to want to increase my boil up, but I'm also going to want to increase my reflux to get my, my product more pure. And so I can increase those. Again, it will solve very quickly. I'm still not quite there, and so I'll increase those again, and maybe increase one more time until eventually I'll get to a place where I'm pretty close to the specifications that I want, and so that will be a good starting point for Promax. If I change these to calculations and go back to the specifications that I wanted, now if I click Execute, since we started from a very close solution, Promax was able to find this solution just fine. We can see our boil up and reflux ratio are close to the four that we were at. And now we were able to solve that column without issues. And so that's another, another rule you can use or another trick is this idea of starting with simple specifications like boil up and reflux ratios and then getting something that's close to what you want and then you can turn on those more complicated specifications. Okay, so that's a few examples for you of, of things that you can do to help your columns converge. Again, I'll just emphasize the first thing to do is to check your streams going into your columns, make sure that everything looks correct. Next, you can work on that convergence tab and trying different models to see if that gives you an accurate solution. If it's a column that has a pump around loop and it's specifically asking you for some kind of pump around estimate, We've illustrated how to create that. And then if it's a column where you have maybe more complex specifications that you're trying to hit, a good way to start is to use those simplified boil up and, and reflux ratios. Get something close and then you can turn on those more complicated specs. Okay, so I hope that video is really helpful for you.